हेलो फ्रेंड नमस्कार आई एम जेके वी आर लर्निंग कंक्रीट टेक्नोलॉजी फ्रॉम डॉक्टर के मोहन सर डॉक्टर के मोहन सर वाज फॉर्मर डायरेक्टर जनरल ऑफ एनसीसीबीएम ही ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेन अबाउट अस अबाउट द कंक्रीट वेरियस चैप्टर्स लाइक वर्कबिलिटी ऑफ कंक्रीट कंप्रेसिव स्ट्रेंथ फैक्चुरल स्ट्रेंथ व्हाट आर द टेस्ट प्रोसीजर टू चेक द वर्कबिलिटी ऑफ द कंक्रीट व्हाट आर द मॉडल्स ऑफ इलास्टिसिटी ऑफ द कंक्रीट today i would like to request dr k mohan sir to tell us about the durability of the concrete sure mr singh i will discuss about durability of concrete durability of concrete may be defined as the ability of concrete to resist with weathering action chemical attack and abrasion while maintaining its desired engineering properties durable concrete will retain its original form quality and serviceability when expect, exposed to its environment now let us discuss what is the significance of durability the durability of concrete is vital with regard to a structure like this a durable concrete is one that performs satisfactorily under anticipated exposure conditions during its service life span the materials and mix proportion used should be such as to maintain its integrity different concretes require different degrees of durability depending on the exposure environment and property desired for example concrete exposed to tidal sea water will have different requirements than an indoor concrete floor one of the main characteristics influencing the durability of concrete is its permeability to the ingress of water oxygen carbon dioxide chloride sulfate and other potentially deleterious most of the durability problems in concrete can be attributed to the volume change in concrete volume change in concrete is caused by many factors the hydration process the effect of heat of hydration the pozzanic action the sulfate attack the carbonation the moisture movement all types of shrinkage shrinkages the effects of chlorides corrosion of steel reinforcements etc cause volume change resulting in crack it is the crack that promotes permeability and thus it becomes a part of a cyclic action till such time that concrete deteriorates and eventually fades now i'll discuss about role or impact of water cement ratio on durability volume change results in crack and cracks are responsible for disintegration of concrete permeability is the main contributory factor for volume change and higher water cement ratio is the fundamental cause of higher permeability therefore higher water cement ratio is greater at least to permeability will lead to volume change will lead to cracks will lead to disintegration and finally lead to failure of concrete so it is a cyclic process therefore for durable concrete use of lowest water cement ratio is a fundamental low water cement ratio concrete is less sensitive to carbonation chemical attack and other detrimental effect that cause lack of durability of a low water cement ratio and adequate adequate cover is the best way to protect reinforcing steel against corrosion now i'll discuss factors affecting durability there are many factors i will discuss one by one number one is physical factors under that first is temperature unfavorable temperature condition can lead to shrinkage cracks and volume changes variation in temperature changes cause secondary stresses in structure second is moisture moisture induces corrosion in steel moisture also acts as a carrier of chemicals inside the body of concrete moisture can also cause efflorescence on structural surfaces seepage oblique leakages Cause inconvenience to occupants and deteriorates the structure due to permeable concrete. 
third is freezing and thawing, leads to expansion of concrete and track. Second is chemical factors. When dealing with durability of concrete, chemical attack, which results in volume change, cracking, and subsequent determination of concrete is a major cause of concern. TIC salt causes volume changes in third, cement content and water cement ratio of concrete. Cement content and water cement ratio of concrete leads to volume change in concrete, resulting in cracks and disintegration of concrete. Number four is cover to embedded steel. For, for main reinforcement up to 12 mm dia, bar for mild exposure, the nominal cover may be reduced by 5 mm. Unless specified otherwise, actual concrete cover should not deviate from the required nominal cover by plus 10 mm. Fifth is workmanship. Patching, mixing, transportation, placing, compaction, and curing require proper work, workmanship for a durable. Six is mineral wire. Petrol, petroleum, distillates, etc., usually affect only fresh concrete in their hardening process. Seventh is organic acids. They have corrosive effect. Eight, earth is vegetable and animal oils and fats. They cause deterioration of concrete surface due to their corrosive action. Ninth is action of sugar. Sugar has retarding effect on fresh concrete and has gradual corrosive effect on hardened concrete. Tenth is action of sewage. Concrete sewers running full remain unaffected, but in partially filled sewers where hydrogen sulfide gas is evolved and sulfuric acid is formed, concrete above sewage level gets affected due to corrosive action of such. Now, I will talk about the common durability problems. So, the following are the common problems. Number one is sulfate attack. Number two is chloride attack. Number three is carbonation. Number four is corrosion of steel in reinforced concrete. Number fifth is alkali aggregate reaction. Number sixth is freezing and thawing, uh, freezing and thawing damage. Number seventh is efflorescence. And number eight is acid attack. Attack. Now I'll discuss one by one. Sulfate attack. Sulfate attack denotes an increase in the volume of cement paste in concrete due to chemical action between the products of hydration of cement and solution containing sulfates, calcium, sodium, potassium, magnesium, and ammonium sulfates. In hardened concrete, calcium aluminate hydrate, that is CAH, can react with sulfate salt from outside. The product of reaction is calcium sulfoaluminate, that is ytringite, which causes an increase in solid volume up to 227%, leading to gradual disintegration. And reaction is two times 3CO, L2O3, 12H2O, plus three times Na2SO, 4, 10H2O, equals three times CO, L2O3, 3CO, 4, 32H2O, that is ytringite, plus 2L, OS size plus 6 NOH plus 17 H2O. The rate of sulfate attack increases with the increase in strength of solution. A saturated solution of magnesium sulfate can cause serious damage to concrete with higher water speeds. Now let us discuss what are the methods for controlling sulfate. Number one is use of SRC, that is sulfate resistant cement. Use of cement with low C3A content is the most effective method. So use of sulfate resistant cement which contains low C3A is helpful. Number two, quality control. A well-designed, placed, and compacted concrete exhibits higher resistance to sulfate attack. Similarly, a concrete with low water cement ratio also shows higher resistance to sulfate. Next is use of air, uh, use of air entrainment. Use of air entrainment to the extent of about 6% has become an essential effect on sulfate resisting quality. Next is use of pojnana. Use of pojnana reduces permeability. Next is high pressure steam curing. High pressure steam curing improves the resistance of concrete to sulfate attack. Then next is use of high alumina cement. 
use of high luminous cement improves the reaction of concrete to cement. Now I'll talk about chloride attack. Chloride attack is particularly important because it primarily causes corrosion of reinforcement. The statics have indicated that over 40% of failure of structures is due to corrosion of reinforcement. Chloride enters the concrete from cement, water, aggregate, and sometimes from mixtures. Due to high alkalinity, that is a strong alkaline nature of calcium hydroxide, pH of about 12.5 to 13, of concrete, a protective iron oxide film is present on the surface of steel reinforcement. This protective passivity layer can be lost due to carbonation and chloride in presence of water. Now I will discuss methods of controlling chloride attack. Number one is limiting the chloride content. To minimize the chances of corrosion, the levels of chloride in concrete should be limited. Total amount of chloride content as Cl in concrete at the time of placing is provided by IS 456-2000. Chlorides in cement to be less than 0.1% maximum or 0.05% maximum for pre stress work. Chlorides in water to be less than 2000 mg per liter for PCC and below 500 mg per liter for RCC. Chlorides in aggregates are generally not encountered, but if it is a good practice to wash sand containing salt more than 3%. Chloride presses are also found in chemical admixtures. Chlorides, chloride free admixtures should be generally preferred. Next is use of supplementary synthesis materials. This will reduce permeability of concrete. Next is increasing the concrete cover over the steel. Next is use of corrosion inhibiting admixture. And finally, use of epoxy coated reinforcing steel. Now I'll discuss carbonation. Carbon dioxide from the air reacts with calcium hydroxide to form calcium carbonate. In the presence of moisture, carbonic acid is formed, which reduces the alkalinity of concrete. That is, calcium hydroxide plus CO2 equals calcium carbonate plus H2O. CO2 plus H2O equals H2CO2. The pH value of concrete reduces from 12.5 to 9. When all the calcium hydroxide has become carbonated, the pH value will reduce up to around 8.3, thus destroying the protective layer and exposing the steel to corrosion. Rate of carbonation depends upon relative humidity, grade of concrete, permeability of concrete, depth of cover, and time. Normally, one millimeter carbonation is reported per year in normal M20 grade of concrete. The highest rate of carbonation occurs at a relative humidity between 50 and 70 percent. Protective coatings such as plastic paints, impermeable, is required to be given for long span bridges, bridge girders, flyovers, industrial structures, and chimneys. Deep cover plays an important role in protecting the steel from carbonation. Measurement of depth of carbonation. A simple method is to treat freshly broken surface of concrete with a solution of phenolphthalein in diluted, in diluted alcohol. Pink color indicates that calcium hydroxide is unaffected by carbon. If the concrete is carbonated, it will remain uncarbonated. Now I'll discuss about corrosion of steel. Corrosion of steel in concrete is an electrochemical process. When there is a difference in electrical potential, Along the steel reinforcement in concrete, an electro electrochemical cell is set up. Different areas of same steel bar become anode and cathode. The electrical connection is being maintained by pore water in the hardened cement base, which acts as electrolyte. The positively charged ferrous ion F at the anode pass into the solution, while the negatively charged free electrode electrons E minus pass through steel into cathode, where they are absorbed by the constituents of the electrolytes and combined with water and oxygen to form hydroxyl ion, that is OH minus. These travel through the electrolyte and combine with the ferrous ion 
to form ferric hydroxide, which is converted by further oxidation. So now reaction I discuss anodic reaction. Fe equals Fe plus 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 two E minus Fe plus 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 two OH minus equals Fe OH twice. Fe OH twice plus two OH two plus O two equals Fe OH twice. Cathodic reaction four E minus plus two H two plus O two equals four OH minus. Chloride and present in the cement paste surrounding the reinforcement react at anodic site to form HCl, which destroys the passive protective film of Fe two O three on the steel. It has been shown in the diagram also. Now, method of controlling corrosion. Limit the chlorides in water, cement, superplasticizers, etc., to acceptable level. Provide proper cover as per BIS now. Cover blocks also need to be of good quality. Concrete should be properly compacted. Make dense, impermeable, or waterproof concrete. Have protective coatings wherever suitable. Ensure proper and timely maintenance of it. Now I'll discuss about efflorescence. Efflorescence in concrete simply means appearance of white colored powdered material on the concrete surface. Efflorescence is the formation of salt deposits, usually white. Of concrete after it has been finished. If the concrete is very permeable so that water can percolate right through its thickness, calcium hydroxide will be leased out. Evaporation at the surface of the concrete leaves behind deposits of calcium tartrate formed by the reaction of calcium hydroxide with carbon dioxide. This deposit of which appearance of whitish appearance is known as efflorescence. This is found, for instance, when water percolates through poorly compacted concrete or through cracks or along badly made joints. And when the operation can take place at the surface of the Now I'll talk about acid. Concrete is not fully resistant to acids, depending upon the type and concentration of acid. Organic acid and phosphoric acids are harmless. The most vulnerable part of the cement hydrate is calcium hydroxide, but CSH gel can also be attacked. Concrete can be attacked by liquid when pH value less than 6.5. But the attack is severe only at pH value below 5.5. At a pH value below 4.5, that attack is very severe. Cement compounds are eventually broken down and leased away. If acids are able to reach the reinforcing steel, through cracks, corrosion can occur, leading to further. दोस्तों अगर आपको वीडियो पसंद आया हो तो लाइक और शेयर जरूर कीजिएगा जैसे कि जो इच्छुक इंजीनियर्स हैं एक्सपीरियंस पीपल हैं वो कंक्रीट टेक्नोलॉजी के बारे में सीख सके अगर हमारे चैनल पे अगर आप नए हैं तो सब्सक्राइब करना ना भूलें बेल आइकन को जरूर हिट कीजिएगा जिससे आपको लेटेस्ट अपडेट नोटिफिकेशन मिलता रहेगा हमारा मोटिवेशन बढ़ता रहेगा वीडियो देखने के लिए बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद